Hi everyone, welcome to Push Your Luck Videos. My name is Eric and today we'll be looking at code names. Now this is a 2015 release designed by Vlada Chivatel and uh, published by Czech Games Edition. So this is uh, Vlada's uh, I think latest game to be released this year. Uh, he has also done several games in the past, like Dungeon Lords, Dungeon Pets, uh, Galaxy Truckers, and Mage Knight. So um, in code names, players are two teams of spies led by one spy master. The spy master will be giving single word clues to his to their team of spies, and the spies are trying to from a from a board of cards trying to decipher which uh, code names belong to their team. So thereby identifying the spy that belongs to them. Uh, they are competing to see who can discover their team of spies first. And they must be careful though, if they happen to uh, activate the assassin, then the team will instantly lose. So whoever is the first team to identify completely their team of spies will win the game. Uh, so let's take a look at the game components, how the game is played, and my thoughts about the game. Alright, so this is how a game of code names will look like. Uh, you will have a set of these these red these these um, spy tiles for the red team. There's eight of eight of them. Uh, the cardboard is is pretty thin, uh, very pretty thin, but uh, it's not too bad. You don't really play a lot of them, and uh, you don't really uh, handle them too much anyway. Uh, the blues the blue deck for the uh, blue team. You have a you have a set of innocent people as well. So these are the innocent people. Um, they are double-sided uh, for your preference, whether the lady or the male side. There's also assassin tile. Um, there's also square cards like these. So these are the square cards. This will be for the spy masters, for both uh, both teams spy master to use. There's also a whole set of these cards. Right, they are double-sided, uh, and and all the words are different. And you'll be to play the game. You'll be laying them out. In this grid of five by five, so there's twenty five cards uh, that will be for each game. So how do you play the game? At the start, uh, you, the both teams will decide who is the spy master, and they'll sit on one end of the table. Then the rest of the team will sit on the other side of the table. This game plays two to eight. There are special rules for two players, for three players. Uh, but I think if you want to play it uh, normally as it's intended, I think you should play it with at least four. That means two per team. So uh, you can go up to uh, four per team in this case. So the, the spy masters, they'll sit on one side and the rest of the team will sit on the other side. Then what will they do? The spy masters will take the square cards, they'll shuffle them, randomly take one and place it into this uh, handy uh, stand that is provided. So you, you so imagine that you're the spy master, you're sitting here, both of you are sitting here and looking at this grid. So what does this grid tell you? This grid will first tell you which uh, code names on this grid belongs to you. So uh, the blue, the blue dots will indicate that uh, the the blue the blue spaces on this spot will belong to the blue team. So for example, like star, bridge, uh, luck, mine, temple, uh, day, missile, and penguin will belong to the blue team. Then everything else that's red will be the red team. Anything that is not colored will be the innocents. So if you if a team happen to guess this innocent, then you just need to place this thing onto the board, and the team will then end its turn immediately. The last thing to take note, uh, two other things to note. One more thing is the assassin. So you see this, uh, the black X here. So if and a team chooses that card, all right, uh, right, the game will end immediately. The team will have lost, and the game will end immediately. Uh, last thing to note is that. Around the, the Spy Master card, there's this red color. This will indicate that the red team will start first. It also means that there's a flexible Spy card here. It means that the red team will have nine, nine spies, nine words they need to guess. Whereas the blue team, which starts second, will have eight only. So this one will be now given to the red team. Now the red team will have a, a stack of nine, nine uh, tiles. Alright, so how do you go about playing the game? So as a spy master, in this case the red team, the red team will look at the board first and give a one word uh, clue, one word clue, and then a number. So the one word clue, you need to give a clue that uh, s means or, or hints at a p one particular word on this clue board that belongs to your team. So for example, um, like a Himalayas, uh, Ninja, vacuum, shot. For Himalayas, I could do like mountain, and I, then I need to give a number. So if I, I look carefully, if uh, mountain only corresponds to one word on the clue, I can say mountain one, which means that 
which hints to the my team members that my clue, which is mountain, only points to one card on this entire table. One. So after I've given my clue, I need to keep quiet, uh, not show any emotions, and then my team will start to discuss and look at the board and see which corresponds most to what I said. So if let's say they correctly guess that Himalayas was the one that I wanted, they point Himalayas. They are correct. In this case, I'll put my my red uh red token onto Himalayas to cover it, which means to let everyone know that I have guessed managed to guess one. Alright. Now if this was in the subsequent turns of this game, uh if I given a larger number, for example if I said um for example I said China two. Alright, if I said China two, uh no, that's not a very good example. Let me see. If I gave uh sneaky for example, sneaky two. Alright, sneaky two. So if I look at this thing, alright, thief is sneaky, ninja is also sneaky. So I gave sneaky two, hoping that they'll be able to guess is two. So in this case, uh since I give number two, they can point at thief, I can put one there, they can point at ninja, I can put one there. Now, if there were subsequent clues that they did not get correctly, all right, they can now ha have one more extra guess to guess any anything that they want. Also, when the teams are guessing, all right, they do not need to guess for this particular clue that I gave. They could guess for the previous clues that I given, but they have not managed to guess yet. So, for example, if the previous clue, uh, mountain, they did not guess correctly, they could now take one. They could guess Himalayas and then put one more there. So three. So you can at most guess one more than the number that the spy master gave. Now, if if let's say for example, if I said a uh, mountain, or uh, and they guess wrongly, let's say they pointed at this one, they guess wrongly. The other team will immediately take their towel and put it down, all right? And my and my team will lose its turn. If they guess innocent as well, say for example, uh, they they put bugle, all right? They are also wrong. My team is also wrong. In this case, we also will uh, end our turn immediately, and the next team will, will, will take their turn. So this is a back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the, the board will start to grow. Players will be able to see how uh, whether they are ahead or behind, and then they can uh, either risk it I, or think of a clue that can give them more opportunities to guess more cards. Uh, there are also two special rules. You can do... Uh, like uh, uh, a zero or unlimited. So the number you can choose can be zero or unlimited. If you choose zero, it means that nothing on the board belongs to that word. In this case, the team has unlimited number of tries. Uh, of course, if you hit an uh, innocent or blue team or assassin, you, you merely end your turn. But they could uh, chain and, and guess a lot of cards correctly at one time and they could potentially win. You can also give a clue and say unlimited, which means that uh, a lot of uh, code names on the board belongs to that clue. So in that case, the team also has unlimited number of tries to guess, but whenever they hit a wrong wrong guess, they will their turn will end immediately. And uh, yeah, so this is how you play um, code names. I'll just give you a quick example. So in this case, uh, I could have done Sneaky 2, and if let's say they guessed correctly, uh, they would have done like Thief and Ninja. Now you have to be careful because certain things um, it depends on how, how the rapport between your team and your uh, your team and you have. If let's say for example you said um soccer in this case, all right, because you wanted uh you wanted a hit, the hit, for example. Or you want you want a shot because uh you shoot the ball into the goal in soccer, uh soccer ball uses the hit to play sometimes. And um what else is there? Uh Mouth, mouth. Uh, there's a lot of shouting in soccer, maybe, but you have to be careful because uh, England is well known for soccer. So the your team may have wanted to guess that as well. So if they guess that, then they have guessed an innocent person. So they will they will lose their turn as well. So uh, anything else? Like sometimes there's a bit of luck in soccer, depending on and there are star players in soccer, and uh, soccer is usually played during the daytime. And uh, no, there's no missile, there's no penguins in soccer. So you can see how a I, these cards are randomly drawn. 25 cards are randomly drawn and placed out. They are also double-sided. So once the game is over, you can always flip over and play the game again. Now, even with this set of cards, um, the clues I can give can also accidentally lead my team to guess the wrong code names. So the tricky part will be having a good spy master, being able to guess be able to give the correct, accurate clues and knowing when to give the good clues. And also, your 
the whether your minds are in sync with your team member. So this is how you play uh, code names. Let's go to my final thoughts about the game. So how do, what do you think of code names by Blada Chivato? Now this is a very good game. Uh, it is a it's kind of a light social game. Sometimes may depend on the group as well uh, whether they get it or not. But it works. It works on quite a lot, of, uh, quite a few levels. Uh, I just brought. I, we just had this game today, and I brought it to school a few hours ago to play, and we already played like six rounds, uh, six games of uh, code names uh, with four people and with five people. Um, it is. It's very easy to pick up. It's very easy to explain. Uh, the what clues you can give is kind of tricky, but the the rule book just does give you a lot of. Um, um, a lot of stuff, a lot of information. Like you can see, that there's pages, there's two pages dedicated to what are the the valid clues that you can give, and uh, there's quite a lot of things that they provided. Like oh, don't be too strict, and there's some flexible rules, so you can follow the the rules provided in rule books just to see, uh, just to ensure that you are playing the game correctly. You can also make it very strict if you want to have your own house rules to make it more strict. Uh, but by itself, I think it's fine. Um, the 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 it does kind of depend on the group. For example, if the if you but you can always choose the right spy master. If the spy master was not very good at giving clues or was not aware, as in the case with uh playing today, sometimes when people give clues, they were not aware that some the clues they give may meet certain uh certain of the code names. They might miss out and then if they give the bad clues especially if they give bad clues it will leave your team very confused you're not sure what is the right word or whether they can guess uh, whether they might guess the thing wrongly for example in my in the video review just now i just showed you if i gave um soccer as as a clue soccer can meet can meet quite a lot of these code names and so that might not be a very good clue to give because it might confuse my team members unless Perhaps the other team have already guessed some of the words and they cover up the words so it will not be confusing for my team members. So as a spy master, you need to be very aware of all the cards there are, as well as your who your uh, team members are, so that you can give the right clue, and then they can guess the right word correctly. As as a uh, uh, the spies who are guessing the the thing, all right, it is a lot of discussion. There's a lot of discussion involved. You're thinking, oh, do you think is that? Do you think is that? You're kind of discussing, uh, but. One of the smaller knocks about the game is that there can be, even in a game like this, there can be AP. Even in a social game like this, there can be analysis paralysis. Why? First thing, the spy master, he'll be thinking a lot. He'll be trying to see, he'll be looking at his at this clue and then looking at all the words there are and trying to think of the best way to, the best word they can give. Because if they can give a clue that has four or five uh, words that are linked to it, then that's a very successful spy master. And if you can guess all correctly, of course, that's a very successful spy master. So far, we've been, we give one, sometimes we give one, sometimes we give two. Uh, never have we successfully given like four and all four were correct. So uh, for, I think giving four is a very good challenge. Uh, giving one or two is okay, but it kind of slows down for your team. Because remember, if you give uh, the, co uh, the clue and then one, so your team only gets one that turn, at most two. So that can put you behind if the other team manages to jump ahead with a uh, good three or good four guesses. Um, but that's just a small knock. Everything else is, is, uh, is, really, is really fine and it's really good. Uh, the, there's so many cards that you can have. You can see there's a lot of, a lot of cards in the game and they're double-sided. So repairability is not a problem. Um, I can, and there's also a lot of clue cards. So there's a lot of different combinations. You can ensure that people who have played this several times will not be able to memorize where all the clues are. Uh, and they also rotate. You can rotate them any way you want. So it will definitely fit. Uh, it will definitely increases the repeatability value. So this is code names. I'm surprised that Blood Chivado has such a light game. Most of his other games are pretty heavy, like if you play Dungeon Lodge, Dungeon Pets, Galaxy Truckers, and um, Mage Knight, especially Mage Knight. You will know that Blood Chivado is quite famous for uh, the really heavy, heavy games. So to, for him to come up with such a light, simple, but um, is really it's quite well designed game is quite a surprise for me as well and I I'm, I really like the game. So this is Code Names by Check Games Edition. Thank you for Check Games Edition for this review copy and thank you for watching.